Greetings in the mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We thank God for His love, for His grace, and for His mercies. We thank Him for having kept us alive. You know, the Word of God says, you know, for as long as one is still counted amongst the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead, a dead lion. God has kept us alive for a reason. God has kept you alive for a reason. God has kept me alive for a reason. And the reason is that He still has a plan. He still has a purpose with our lives and for our, uh, our lives. It was, you know, a, an excellent, an excellent week, and it continues to be a great, a great week. You know, we thank, uh, we thank God for His sustenance, for His provision, and His, uh, and His protection. And uh, you know, I just want to take this time and welcome all, you know, our uh, MTW family. Thank you very much for taking time to join us uh, tonight. Thank you very much for taking time just to come, you know, and sit at the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then receive, uh, you know, the, the, the weight which is going to be ministered uh, tonight. And I also just want to welcome all our friends that we have made, you know, ever since we started with our uh, Facebook and, uh, you know, uh, YouTube uh, streaming our online uh, online services. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, you know this uh, mtw family when COVID started we would never have thought that you know in the midst of it in the midst of these challenges we will be having such a big and awesome uh, family you being counted amongst mtw mtw family thank you very much for following us thank you very much you know for those who have subscribed it truly means a lot to uh, to us i want to take this time also and just acknowledge and thank our general overseer and also our senior pastor, Pastor uh, Pastor Joylin, and our general overseer, Pastor Pastor Strike. You no, know, just continue to thank them for the work that they are doing in uh, in us. You know, continue to train us and continue to support us, continuing to be uh, to be there for uh, for us. You know, at all at all times, we truly thank God for thank God for them. You know, for uh, preserving them, and we trust that God will continue uh, to uplift them even. Uh, even more because we know as they move up they are drawing many of us up as well with uh, with them i believe that this is going to be an awesome an awesome service and i believe that god you know has got something great in store for every single one a uh, single one of us maybe just to also take this time and acknowledge you know our uh, technical uh, technical team sometimes we talk about some of the other guys you know the pastors and all the other uh, people who would come uh, on this particular platform but then we forget you know the guys behind uh, behind the the scenes who make it uh, who make it happen and you know they some of them they spend sleepless nights and all that we truly appreciate appreciate them and we believe god has raised them for a time such as uh, such as this without wasting uh, wasting time tonight i want to talk to us about uh, you know the purpose uh, my title is born for uh, born for a purpose our senior pastor uh, pastor Joylin on uh, on Sunday uh, ministered powerfully uh, powerfully so you know uh, and her title was uh, you know man what is it that you are uh, what you're doing why are you uh, why are you here why are you here what is it that you know God has brought you here for and then this got me thinking to say Indeed, you know, God has got a plan uh, for my life. God has got a plan for your life. And the question is, do we know or do I know what God's plan is for my life? And the life that I am living, am I fulfilling a uh, fulfilling purpose? And then I realized that indeed, God has got an awesome and great plan for each and every one of us. It doesn't matter our circumstances. It doesn't matter the situation that we are faced with. It doesn't matter the challenges that we are going through. Let us not forget that God has got a plan. God has got a purpose with every single one, with every single one of us. I want to take my first uh, scripture from the book of uh, the book of Genesis. I'm going to read just two, uh, just two verses there. Verse 4 and 5. Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 and, uh, and 5 and this I'm taking from the New King James uh, version it reads as follows this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field 
was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the lord had not caused it to rain on the earth the last part of this uh, of verse 5 this is what i'm interested in it says and there was no man to till the ground you know when you go through the history of creation you realize that man was the last to be uh, to be created god created everything else you know before he created uh, he created man when you look at this this already tells you that by the time man was uh, was created there, there, there was work to be uh, to be done when you read or this text which we have read which we have read from in uh, genesis chapter uh, chapter 2 it tells us that all along god did not cause it to uh, to rain and the main reason he did not cause it to rain is because there was no man to till the ground this already says that god's plan you know for for for, for men or for adam at that time was so that man could come and till the ground but until such time that he was there God did not cause it to, to rain. And rain speaks of abundance. Rain speaks of it speaks of life because it gives water. So the word of God tells us that there wasn't any of that because God had not created created man and uh, you know the, the the ground was not to be uh, was not tilled at that time because the man was not was not there. This says to us that purpose precedes a man. Many of us we think that uh, you know we we get created or we get born then our purpose uh, our purpose comes no it doesn't work like that uh, you know purpose always precedes us this means that we are always born for uh, for a purpose god does not create a man and then begins to ask what am i going to be doing with him what is it that i should uh, i should get him to do no it says man is always created for something that god has already had uh, uh, you know uh, they had planned in uh, in advance i'm reminded even uh, even now if you remember the story of moses this wasn't even something that i was going to uh, to use as i'm sitting as i'm sitting here uh, remember the story of moses god promised uh, abraham to say Israel is going to be uh, in, in captivity for 400 for 400 years but then after 400 years they are going to be uh, to be set free and in the midst of chaos when you uh, begin to read from Exodus chapter uh, chapter 1 it says you know towards uh, towards the end to say boys were killed and all that but when you go into uh, Exodus chapter 2 from uh, from verse 1 it tells us that you know a, you know a son was born Moses was uh, was born so why was Moses born Moses was born so that he will be able to take Israel out of captivity by the time he was born Israel was in was in captivity so he was primed up to be able to release to release them so it's not like he was born and then Israel went into captivity no the the purpose for which he was born was there before he was uh, he was born so we must also understand that God always you know the purpose is there before uh, before us because once it is the other way the, uh, the other way around many of us might even die having never known what our purpose was because then our purpose sometimes we might die before our purpose came I came into the uh, into the picture. You see it even you know in industries or even you know whether it's government or it's uh, it's companies and whoever. Whenever they create jobs, they don't employ a person. Then uh, they uh, they create the job. No, they first create the job and then they do the job description and everything then they start to advertise to say we need a person who will come and the duties are this and this and this and this you will be shocked if you are to be employed by a company you get there and then they say we don't know yet what is it that we want to do with you we will just see when you are here to say what can be what can be done then i i wouldn't want to work for such for such a company because then that company does not have a direction it's not going any anywhere because it does not have purpose and they've brought me in and they don't know what to do with uh, what to do with me it tells you that something is not going is not going right around around that so i want us to know and i want to remind us to say god has created us for uh, for a purpose and this is what uh, pastor joilin you know uh, touched on a lot during her, her ministering when he says why are you here men you know and in the, this was a question which god had asked uh, elijah to say elijah I see you here but what are you doing uh, what are you doing here because where you are it's not where I want you to be where you are it's not what I have called you to uh, to do and I've noticed quite a lot to say 
you know, uh, maybe just to highlight one of the other things to say that we understanding this then we will take courage in knowing that none of us is, uh, is a mistake. Maybe sometimes the circumstances of our birth might have been uh, questionable. The, the circumstances of our birth might have been the, the mistake, but with us, we are not uh, we are not a mistake. We are within God, uh, God's plan. We are within God's purpose. So even when you no know, things might have not uh, gone according to uh, to plan, whether the pregnancy was planned or or not, I want you to know that you are not a mistake. You have been born for a for for a purpose. God has got a plan uh, with your life. God has got a plan. For your uh, for your life do not be discouraged and wonder why are you here maybe you know, what you should be seeking is to say god what is it that you want me to to do what purpose do you want me to uh, to fulfill but always know that there is a purpose there's a reason why you are uh, why you are here and the other thing which i want to uh, highlight which you know i i picked up along a uh, long way uh, along the way is that many of uh, you know the the things which uh, discourage us. You know, along the way, we you know we become uh, discouraged. An example in in point is is Elijah. But I'll get back to uh, I'll get back to him not uh, not long, and then read a few a few verses you know are around uh, what Pastor Jolene uh, had read, and also even uh, that other week you know Pastor Matlangu had ministered uh, had ministered on uh, to say that many of the things which. Uh, discourage uh, discourage us many of the things you know ab about which we become uh, discouraged have you sat down to realize that we are discouraged about things which are not related to our purpose we are discouraged about things which have got absolutely nothing many a times to do with what God has called us uh, has called us for and if you were to sit down and you look just ju 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 just get something and write down and say this is what has discouraged me and all those things and just look at what god has called you for or what god wants you to do and look at what is uh, is discouraging you most of the time they are just worlds uh, worlds apart you know it's similar to adam for example when he was in the uh, in the garden you know god has created the you know a a, a garden for, for a man, man is, 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 uh, has been born or has been created to be able to till, uh, to till the ground. Can you imagine when the man who is put in that garden is, be, is called there to create or to till, to till the ground? And then the man just goes and climbs, uh, and climbs the tree. And then on the tree, he, from the tree, he just uh, he, he falls from he falls from there. The man becomes discouraged to say, "I fell from the tree." But the question becomes, "What were you doing on the tree?" Did God call you, or did God create you to climb a tree, or did He create you to take care of uh, to take care of the garden? When you are climbing the tree, it must be for you to be cutting the branches, not just for you to be climbing uh, climbing the tree for the sake of climbing of climbing the tree. You look at many of the things which discourage us. Truly, we are discouraged about things which have got absolutely nothing to do with our with our calling. We are discouraged about things which have got absolutely nothing to do with what God has called us uh, has called us for. Sometimes you're discouraged about the promotion. Have you ever uh, wondered to say, okay, this is the promotion that I am uh, that I want, but is it in line with what God has called you? And many a times the promotion is so that I can get a, a better income. Sometimes I can get a better title. Some some of us sometimes we are discouraged even about our studies. But the question becomes is that study or you no know, that that qualification that you are pursuing relevant to what God wants you to uh, what, what God wants you to pursue or what God wants you to to do many times you find that they are completely unrelated to what God has called us for and uh, they are completely unrelated to God's purpose for our uh, for our lives let me get now to uh, to Elijah and just use him as a, as a case study even in uh, you know in our you know, in, in, in terms of God, uh, God's purpose for our for our lives, uh, First Kings chapter nineteen. Uh, I will read a few of the verses which uh, Pastor Joelin uh, read and ministered uh, ministered upon. Uh, First Kings chapter nineteen, verse nine to eleven. These are the ones which I'm going to read first. Then I will read other uh, other verses afterwards. Again, this I'm also still reading in the New King James Version. It reads as follows. And there he went into a cave. And spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah went into uh, into a cave. Pastor Jolene spoke a lot about uh, you know about uh, about a cave. One of the things which I can just uh, you know uh, add is just that a cave is dark, generally speaking, unless men had gone in to modify it. But normally, a cave will be will be dark. And God was surprised to say, 
man what what are you doing in this dark uh, in, in this dark place what are you doing in this dead place a cave is not meant to be inhabited by men and god is wondering to himself to say but what is this man doing here i did not call him here and when you are in the dark you cannot you cannot see in uh, in the cave you cannot see in the cave your vision is uh, is is hampered in the cave your vision is is is, is obscured it's, uh, it's 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 obstructed so and god says uh, in, uh, and, 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 and the next verse, uh, verse 10. So he said, this is Elijah, uh, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. He says, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take, uh, to take my life. You will realize that what Elijah was zealous uh, about was not what God had intended for him to uh, to do and this got me thinking to say it's possible that we can claim or say that we are doing god's work but th this god's work that we claim to be doing it's not what god has called us has called us for i can minister the word though i'm not called to minister the uh, the, the word it's very much possible and sometimes i could be fine doing something else behind the camera only to find that I'm supposed to be in front of the camera ministering uh, ministering the weight. And I will get tired because when I'm behind the camera, I must carry, uh, you know, the, the equipment. I must carry the camera. I must carry all the other instruments. And sometimes I will get tired of doing of doing that. Why? Because that this is not what I've been called to, uh, to do. And Elijah says, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of, uh, of hosts. You know, and he highlights for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. You realize something here in the next in the in the next verse, and also even the others that I'm going to read to say, God does not entertain what uh, you know discouraged uh, Elijah. God does not entertain what. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Elijah was worried uh, was worried about, or what Elijah was concerned was concerned about. Verse eleven says, "Then he said, this is God, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord.' Basically, he was saying, you are crazy in there. When you are there, you are not seeing anything. Everything is dark. So, can you please just shift your focus? Can you please just move out of that place so that you can see better? Then maybe." my and your conversation can move along in a better in a better direction you will make more uh, more sense to me elijah maybe when you are out of the cave because i can see your judgment is clouded by uh, by, by the place that you find your, uh, yourself in because that's not where i want you to uh, I want you to be. Maybe once you can see the light, once you can smell, uh, you know the the fresh air out uh, out there, you'll think better and you'll realize that I have got a plan. I have got a purpose for your life. You are not just here to serve to to you know just to be a statistic. Uh, to to uh, you you are you are not just here just to be a number to just add to the billions of people that we have in the world. No, I have got a plan. I've got a purpose with and for your and for your life. And behold, this is uh, the, the, the second part of uh, verse, uh, verse 11. And behold, the Lord passed by, and the great and strong wind tore in uh, into the mountains and broke the rocks into uh, sorry, in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the, in the earthquake. I don't really want to, uh, to labor or to dwell on this, but the main portion that I wanted to highlight was the first one to say, uh, God said, go out and stand on the mountain before before the lord and we realize that the mountain is a top place when you are on the mountain you are able to see much further than when you are in when you are in a cave because the cave is small you just see i mean even if you were to be able to, if even if there was to be light inside inside the cave your, your vision will be will be hampered because uh, there will be many other things which will which will be blocking or obstructing your view in there but when you are on the mountain you can be able to turn around you can be able to circle that place and see all directions and see from all corners of the world and god wanted elijah to have a better picture of you know of, of his uh, of his surroundings let us go to the next uh, the next verses verse 15 and uh, up to uh, up to 17 they read as follows then the lord said to him go return on your way to the wilderness of damascus and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. 
also you shall anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi as king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your uh, in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will uh, will kill. So God reminds El uh, Elijah uh, to say, Elijah, you are here, and this is not where I want you to to be. I still have got a purpose. I still have got a plan with your uh, with your life, and I still have got a plan for your uh, for your life. These are the three people that I want you to go and. Uh, and anoint. I want you to go and anoint Hazael. I want you to go and anoint Jehu. I also want you to go and anoint uh, Elisha in your uh, in your place. And uh, so that should there be those who escape the sword of Hazael, then Jehu will be able to uh, to kill. And if they escape Jehu's sword, then uh, Elisha will be able to uh, to kill. You know. God had made sure that there are three uh, systems or three areas of defense that he that, that, that he creates or that, that that he builds that he builds up to say if they escape this one they will be able to find somebody else on uh, you know on, on his or uh, on the other side and if they escape on the other side then they will be able to find somebody else on another on another side so Elijah your mission is still great and this is what God is saying to us even in the midst of covid God says do not focus on what is going around uh, around you because you will be discouraged about all the statistics you will be discouraged about all the sickness and diseases but you realize that those are not related to what god has called has called you to or what god has called you uh, has called you for so and then he says to elijah go and uh, anoint these three people that i have called you to uh, to to anoint and you see right from uh, right from there when elisha went out and then Eli uh, sorry, Elijah went out and then he began to move in his in his purpose you don't read anywhere else where it talks about Elijah being uh, being discouraged no once he found his purpose he was never discouraged i want to say this to us to say purpose gives you you know purpose propels you uh, forward purpose no matter how many challenges you will face when you are following purpose you will never be uh, be discouraged because the purpose itself is what encourages uh, enc uh, encourages you you realize that with uh, with Elijah maybe let me give an example with uh, with, with Elijah and Elisha uh, the word of God tells us that Elisha asked for a double fold or a twofold uh, anointing you know which a, you know a double portion of of Elijah of Elijah's anointing and then it says that he did twice the miracles which Elijah uh, Elijah did so Elisha did twice or performed two times the miracles which were performed by uh, by Elijah can you imagine how much we would have lost had uh, Elijah remained uh, you know discouraged in uh, in there how much had El if elijah had remained you know uh, discouraged wallowing in his own sorrows wallowing in his own in his own troubles and not focusing and not realizing that god has got a purpose god has got a plan for his uh, for his life he would he would have robbed us he would have robbed israel of a prophet who, uh, as great as uh, as elijah and you realize that once we are we fulfill purpose the people that you know we the, the lives that we touch they impact more people than we could ever uh, impact think about it this way if elijah had touched a thousand a thousand lives and he had died before he anointed elisha then it means that uh, 2000 lives would have been uh, would have been lost because elisha could not have touched those 2000 lives but think about it now to say had he, uh, he touched a thousand lives and then he fulfilled purpose and then uh, elisha whom he had anointed touched a uh, 2000 2000 lives no, between them they've touched 3000 uh, 3000 lives think about it this way also to say once elisha also uh, you know does the same how many more lives will be touched because of just one man who fulfilled who fulfilled uh, purpose i just want to remind us god has called us for a purpose we are not a mistake let us not be discouraged let us be encouraged and even in our discouragement even as you are hearing this uh, this message think about it you might find that you are discouraged by something that i've already highlighted that is not even in line with your with your purpose dust yourself up 
and realize that God still has a plan for your uh, for your life. When Elijah came out of the came out of the cave, then he went and he fulfilled what God had called him to uh, to do. And even today, we are able to quote we are even, we are even able to quote the miracles which were performed by. Uh, by Elisha along uh, along the way and they would never have been there had it not been because of Elijah who went and fulfilled and fulfilled purpose I just want to say to us God has got a plan for our lives God has got a plan for your life God has got a plan for my uh, for my life know you are born for a purpose just know you are called by God for a specific purpose. May God help you. May God help me. May God help us to find what is it that he has called us for. Maybe our cry now should be, God, why are we uh, why are we here? What have you called us? What have you called us for? And he's a good God. He will give us an answer to that. I hope that this message has liberated you. I hope that this message has encouraged you to find out why are you uh, are you here? Remember you are born for for a purpose let us pray my heavenly father in the mighty and wonderful name of our lord and savior jesus christ we thank you father for this wonderful time that we have had tonight we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor my lord and my god precious lord i pray for every single one of us mighty god every single person under the sound of this voice mighty god we know you've uh, you, you've created us for a purpose we know we have been born for a purpose my prayer tonight mighty god is that help us precious lord help each and every one of us to discover what is it that you us for to discover why are we here so that my god we do not spend our time committing it onto things which are not propelling us to where you want us to be and so that we do not find ourselves discouraged mighty god by those very things which are not taking us where you want us to uh, you want us to be we bless your name father we give you honor we give you glory mighty god we give you praise in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen